Today, we are going to be blasting through the Legacy Meta game with a new combo that is starting to shake up the format. Only less than a week ago, MTGO user Killaby won the biggest online Legacy tournament with a unique combo. The deck is very confusing to look at, so to try and break it down easier, it has two main game plans. The easiest place to start is with Lion's Eye Diamond and Echo of Eons. LED lets us discard our hand to add 3 mana of any colour. As Echo of Eons can be flashback for 3 mana, we can play out all the cheat cards in our hand, sacrifice the Lion's Eye Diamond, and then flashback Echo of Eons. Now we have the simple combo out of the way, the main win condition is with Riddlesmith and Containment Construct. Riddlesmith lets us loot every time we cast an artifact, and this works really nicely alongside the Construct because we can exile the cards we discard and can play them until end of turn. So, if we have both of these cards on the table and cast one of our many zero drop artifacts, we will most likely draw through our deck and cast Grape Shot to win the game. This was on turn 2 by the way. Overall, this deck is really difficult to break down quickly, so I'm going to break down any cards that you don't know on the screen now throughout this video when I use them to combo. To start the first round, we've got a bad opening 7 and find a very nice 6 here on the draw. What's great is we have 3 cheap artifacts to play with Lion's Eye Diamond and Echo of Eons and can make our land drop before we wheel. The opponent starts off with a tapped Watery Grave and we find a Containment Construct off the top. Now, this actually means that we can have a turn 1 kill here if our Echo of Eons does not get countered. What's also nice is that our Gamble is not going to be discarded to the Lion's Eye Diamond because it will be exiled by the Containment Construct. Now you might be worried that the Echo of Eons will get exiled by the Containment Construct, but luckily the trigger is a May, so I'll say no to the Echo of Eons and yes to the Gamble. Now I'm praying that this Echo resolves. And to our luck, it actually does. And to get even more lucky, we find another Lion's Eye Diamond and another Echo of Eons, essentially meaning that we can draw another 7 cards. Now we do technically have a kill here, because we can gamble for the Riddlesmith, cast the Riddlesmith, and then win the game. But the slight problem with that is we've let the opponent draw 7 new cards, meaning that they may have Force of Will in hand. So here I want to take a safer line by using Gamble to get a second Lion's Eye Diamond out of our deck. We discard the Ancient Tomb at random, but it doesn't matter because any card discarded gets exiled under the construct that we can use later. And now we can sacrifice the second Lion's Eye Diamond, all of the cards apart from the Echo of Eons will go under the Construct, and we can cast Defense Grid, and then Echo of Eons. Now with Defense Grid on the table, the opponent can't counter the Echo, and it resolves. Now we just burn out. We have some options, but we can't really do anything. As Grape Shot is our only win condition in the deck, I can't pitch it to Chromox to cast the Gamble, and I definitely made a mistake with the second Lion's Eye Diamond, sacking it for 3 blue instead of sacking it for black, or red so that I could either cast the Entomb or the Gamble. I thought for about 2 minutes and I'm pretty sure there's nothing I could do here just because I made a couple of newbie mistakes, so I'm just going to cast the Grape Shot and try and kill them with my 2-1 creature. It's crazy that I could have had a turn 1 kill, game 1 for the first time I've ever played this deck, but I definitely messed this up. If you noticed the key mistakes I made to not kill my opponent on turn 1 here, let me know in the comment section down below because this deck is so complicated. What is good though is that my opponent can only play 2 Lotus Petal and pass back the turn. This is because Echo of Eons destroyed their hand that they chose to keep and gave them 7 random cards which clearly aren't great. What's good though is we Urza's Bobble the opponent and it shows us that they have Force of Will at hand. As they do have 3 mana on the table, they can pay 3 for Defense Grid and cast Force of Will for its alternate cost. For our draw steps though, we find Breakthrough and Vindictive Flamestoker. These are two great cards because they both draw us cards and discard cards at the same time, which is good with the construct on the table, because whenever we discard a card, technically counts as drawing a card if we can play it this turn. After the Flamestoker resolves, we can now play the Mishra's Bauble and the Breakthrough to put oil counters on the Flamestoker to make its activated ability cheaper. After the Mishra's Bauble resolves, I follow up with the Ursa Saga and I'm going to cast the Breakthrough for X's 3. This means I'm going to draw 4 cards and I get to keep all but 3, so I'm going to be discarding 4 cards here. After we put a counter on the Flamestoker, the Breakthrough resolves and we draw a load of 0 drops. So here I'm going to discard 2 useless lands and 2 0 drops that we could instantly cast from the Containment Construct. But after I cast the Lion's Eye Diamond, my opponent sacrifices their 2 Lotus Petals and tap their land to Force of Will it. I think this is a bit aggressive because they are just destroying their mana to try and counter my Lion's Eye Diamond, but I guess it makes sense when they're in the blind and don't know what's in my hand. 
after they untap and they brainstorm, they concede the game and we move on to sideboarding. Going into boarding, we want an extra defense grid, an empty the warrens, and a silence because I'm thinking that my opponent is on doomsday and we want to be able to stop them from comboing and kill them quickly. Going into the next game, we have a great opening hand because we have a turn 1 defense grid to try and stop the opponent from interacting with us, and then we have a load of value spells to follow up with to try and dig for Lion's Eye Diamond and ways to combo. But the opponent puts a spanner in the works when they start with the Thoughtseize and after some deliberation take the defense grid from my hand. After we take a draw step and find an Ancient Tomb, there's not many plays that I'd like to make, so I want to be a bit more patient and see what we find off the top next turn. Fortunately, the opponent does not play a spell or a land, and we find an Urza Saga. This is great because not only can we make constructs to attack the opponent, but we'll get a Lion's Eye Diamond in two turns. On my end step, the opponent considers, bins a spell, and then starts the turn with a Duress. They take the breakthrough from my hand because it does have a lot of value with the cards that I can draw with it, and we find an Urza's Bauble off the top. Now the game plan is clear, we're just looking to make massive constructs and bash into the opponent, because with them playing that duress, and with the consider, I'm pretty sure that they're on doomsday. After passing back to the opponent, they find a fetch land and use a brainstorm. They use a load of cantrip shenanigans and then cast personal tutor to put the doomsday on top of their library. The only slight problem is that we have Lion's Eye Diamond coming down next turn, and with an echo of eons in hand, we can shuffle away that doomsday. Not only that, but we find a Lion's Eye Diamond off the top, which is also good because that's just extra mana for us. From here, I cast the Lion's Eye Diamond, attack him with my creatures, then activate both of them and use Echo of Eons. The opponent does have Force of Will, so I can sacrifice the Flame Stoker to draw four more cards, but the opponent then concedes the match. Going into the next round, we're on the draw and genuinely have a very good hand that can easily kill on turn one, depending what the opponent does. The opponent starts off with a Faithless Looting, putting an Archon of Cruelty in the graveyard, and then griefs us. This is really bad because they take the Riddlesmith, and then they have Reanimate to put the Archon of Cruelty into play. Yep, this game is basically over. I decided to take a couple more draw steps just to see what would happen, but with the Archon dealing so much damage and being so disruptive, I just conceded the game. Going into boarding, Leyland of the Void is really good, Defense Grid is really bad, and we want things like Chain of Vapor, Tormod's Crypt, and Empty the Warrens to also come in. Being on the play, we have a great opening hand. What's good against Reanimator is that Reanimator typically needs a specific combination of cards, so a turn 1 Echo of Eons will typically disrupt them heavily because it will screw their turn 1 play. So here we can play our Mishra's Bauble and Lion's Eye Diamond, and then sacrifice the Lion's Eye Diamond to Echo of Eons from the graveyard. It doesn't find us the best hand in the world, but what's good is we can cast the Riddlesmith on this turn and hope that the opponent can reanimate a creature next turn. And just that happens, the opponent just casts Grief, takes the gamble from our hand, and passes back the turn. This is great for us because now we know the opponent has no lands in hand. What's good here is that we can actually use Mycosynth Gardens to copy the Mishra's Bauble so that our Mox Opal is turned online. There's another line for playing the Ancient Tomb and filtering the mana through the Mycosynth Gardens, but I'd rather have more mana to put into this Breakthrough. With Mox Opal now turned on, I can cast Breakthrough with X equals 2. This means we're going to draw 4 cards and I get to keep 2 of the 6 of them. We find Lion's Eye Diamond, which is a great find because now we can use Echo of Eons to find more 0 drop artifacts to try and combo kill them this turn. After casting the Lion's Eye Diamond, we Echo of Eons and find a fresh new 7. Here I continue to try and combo kill the opponent, but it just doesn't seem to work out because our second Echo of Eons doesn't really find anything. Maybe I should have taken the route of not trying to combo this turn and more about getting a Leyline of the Void or a Tormod's Crypt in play so they can't reanimate a creature on this turn. The opponent doesn't have anything impactful though because they just cast a Grief and a Thoughtseize to take two good cards from our hand. Now we have a good line because we can get Leyline of the Void in play and don't have to be afraid of the opponent reanimating a creature. With the Leyline of the Void now in play, the opponent is essentially locked out of the game because we're just drawing to the Construct and once we eventually find it, the opponent concedes. Going on into the next game, we mulligan a clunky opening 7, but keep a very nice 6 with Leyline of the Void in the opening hand. So we obviously start the game with the Leyline and see what the opponent can do turn 1. With the Leyline in play, the opponent just passes back the turn, not doing anything on the first turn. What's interesting is we find a Tormod's Crypt off the top. With the opponent not doing anything, I think I'm just going to use the Mishra's Bauble to draw a card on their upkeep and keep the Tormod Script until they kill the Leyline. Maybe this is bad logic because they do play Discard in their deck, and if they kill the Leyline plus Discard spell plus Reanimate, I would be in a bad spot. 
From here though, the opponent just uses Wear Tear to tear the Ley Line of the Void to destroy it and passes back the turn. What's nice is we find an Urza Saga off the top and a Construct so that we can now play the Construct and also play the Tormod script to stop them from reanimating any cards. Now what's interesting is the opponent untaps and plays a card that I have never seen before. It's called Stronghold Gambit. I don't really understand the wording of this card, you can read it on the screen, but because we have a Riddlesmith in hand, let's reveal it and see what it does. After revealing the Riddlesmith, it goes into play and the opponent's creature doesn't go into play, they just revealed an Attractor to me. So from here, the opponent concedes the match. And then I realized that the opponent sent me some very nasty messages because they accidentally skipped their first turn. So I say GG's and I move on to the next round. You are so f***ing lucky kid, you have no idea. Go play the lottery. Okay. <laughs> What a surprise. Dr. Top Deck was not right. We lost the lottery. But what we did win was the next round. I managed to assemble the combo to get a turn two kill, which you should have known because I showed you this in the introduction. We then drew our whole deck with both Riddlesmith and the Construct and then cast Grape Shot for Storm 20. Now this deck does have flaws, and that's with the mulligans. Here in game 3, in the 4th round, I sadly had to mulligan down to 4, and with the opponent having 2 wastelands and a sphere, we were just completely locked out of the game. To finish off the league, we got a win, getting 4 wins and 1 loss, so I'll open up these 5 chests for you gambling degenerates. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.